more, okay, which means you're not going to stay in contact with the parts of the land that could possibly allow the plant to take up the nutrients that we need is not occurring. So when I say that it would require an entire change of everything, which literally cannot happen now. So your only option is, for example, if somebody is low in iron, is to possibly, you know, most likely take the supplement. And then if you've ever known someone who's had to take an iron supplement, that's not a fun process, okay? Just like an oral? Um, because of the fact that it's done in the digestive system and the fact that you have to take such a high amount okay to get a small amount into the blood it ends up creating a lot of um, intestinal and colon issues people end up having very severe um, uh, constipation I mean it, it's not a pretty picture gotcha. they have a supplement now that's not based mm -hmm. upon the regular iron pills um, it's by family foods called blood builders and it's actually, um, they've taken like fruits and vegetables from other parts of the world. And, the like, beet, the beet out, extract? Um, uh -uh, it's just like some formula of herbs and um, fruits and dry, dehydrated stuff from other parts of the world that actually can build your blood up quickly and you not suffer the intestinal issues and stuff that. And I know there's some kind of beet extract out there now. Yeah, that beet. people can um, use. A lot of people are using the beet extract, but I don't know how beneficial mm -hmm. that is. They'll say beet or beet. 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 Okay. Like beet. Yeah. And um, then my I sister. Know that they have like beet juices and stuff like that, but when we yeah. test like the pregnant women, it doesn't really boost it like they need to. The only thing that we found that works is the blood builders. Okay. Um, and typically people that, you know, can get food from other countries, so it's a lot better. Um, yeah, our, our yeah, that's a whole nother topic. Yeah. Is that why beets are supposed to be good for you? Yes. They're, yes. Iron. Yeah. they're good for the blood, period, from what I understand. They're just good, period. And I mean, yeah. I love them. <laughs> like the number one so target. here's the problem. But think about this. Where does it come from? How, all right, if you think about beets, okay, and you want to get them into your diet, you're going to go to the store and you're probably going to buy the can or the jar that has been processed. Yes. Okay. That has gone through all the lovely chemical manipulations to it that it can do. So what do you think's happened to it before you even get to eat it? All the nutrients are gone. The nutrients are gone. And anything yep. that's came. I know. I mean it's, it's and then, like, oh I have, my goodness. Oh, yeah, don't even my start biggest it problem is the uh, <laughs> people who are like switching to plant based, which plant based, yes, is wonderful. However, if you're eating all of the processed wannabe meats, that is horrible and it has like way too much soy for your actual body <laughs> that it'll eventually shut down and then you'll have a whole bunch of other issues. Mm -hmm. I because you're talking to somebody who grew up in a small town. We were very dependent on farming, okay? People worked the land. You had your farms. You you traded for meats at the end of the seasons when it happened. I mean, so you're looking at a person who grew up with foods. I look back on it now, and I'm like, we didn't even have, like, a true grocery store until I was in my teens, okay? You had the little store that you went to that had the flour and the sugar and salt and stuff like that. The rest of the time, you were dependent on foodstuffs that you grew. You know, we had our root cellars. Um, we, we did all of that. And, you know, you get to get our first grocery store. And I can remember going, and I'd be like, well, what is that? I don't even know what that is. You know? I mean, I didn't even know what a soda was until I was in my teens. So, you know, it's just like, and now I look at the diet, and I'm, like, oh, what? And I'm a product of that, which, you know, granted, <clears throat> my husband and I now are trying to move back to it, you know, because we bought our land, and we're trying to get into farming practices and stuff like that. It's not easy. It's not easy. But luckily, you know, the land we got is a um, land that's never been used. 
Okay, it was natural, so we are allowing, we're trying to do processes to keep it that way. So, when we were growing up, my grandfather had a farm, so we did 100% farm food. We had fish, mm -hmm. chickens, vegetables, everything, okay. fruits, everything went there. So, when we go out, even in the Middle East, we mm -hmm. have a difference. When we came here, huge difference yeah. and also when we go back there uh, like we, that's a third world mm -hmm. still. so they are not that well equipped with all the chemicals and all the right. soil. Mm -hmm. we still feel there's some you know the food is different the sizes are different mm -hmm. the chickens are smaller yes uh, and uh, the bananas are smaller the tomatoes are smaller mm -hmm. and they taste different and they taste different yeah yeah I mean, you know, and that's that's what it is. And, you know, like even though we have our availability to like farmers markets and stuff, you still want to ask that farmer that you might be buying their produce from, how did you do this? What were your practices doing this? Um, it, it's just, just sad. Now, this would be what happens on the um, stages that we just talked about. So if we kind of follow along as to what we just talked about, remember, we take in 2 plus and 3 plus. We need that stomach acid to make sure that any 3 plus goes to 2 plus. Then we have in the stomach this um, transport that can attach to the 2 plus. Once we get the 2 plus, that now gets to go into areas of the intestines and so forth. We got a huge blood supply. It will get used as it goes through. And then in the plasma of the blood, we have the ability to transport it. If needed, we can transport it to the liver where the liver will say, okay, I've got a little protein that you can bind to and you can hang out for a little while. And then when the body needs it, it simply pulls it back and takes it back to the blood. So this is, this is a very important process because of this is what is needed for that hemoglobin to bind an oxygen and get the oxygen to the tissues, which is so important. Now, like I said, <clears throat> The red blood cells, they are going to have a um, lifespan, and we have to get them produced. Now, the way that the body is going to work on producing the red blood cells, once again, it's a process maintained by negative feedback. When it picks up on the fact that we have enough red blood cells in the blood oxygen level, when it picks up on information, there's enough. The slow, it'll slow down a little bit on making red blood cells. Then when it picks up, oh, we need more. It will say, okay, let's make more. So, <clears throat> anytime there could be a situation that makes oxygen levels too low, hypoxemia, Ever heard of it? Okay, now, hypo meaning not enough, okay? So this would mean there's not enough oxygen. The information will make the kidneys produce a hormone. Now, you saw this, I think, in the table in Chapter 16. It was called EPO erythropoietin all right so if the body picks up oxygen levels are too low it will signal to the kidneys this need for it to release the erythropoietin the EPO that erythropoietin goes to the areas of red bone marrow and it stimulates that red bone marrow to produce more red blood cells, the process of erythro 
poiesis. Now, an example, trauma. Someone has had some blood loss. But let's say that it wasn't enough blood loss for them to actually get an infusion. So what will happen is the person will probably be called to rest or they may be put into the hospital for the rest because they know that the body can replace this lost blood, which would mean affecting oxygen levels because the body would say there's not enough oxygen level in the blood. Let's release the erythropoietin, which will act on the kidney, which will say, well, the, it'll act on the kidneys, would get the erythropoietin, go to the bone marrow, make the red blood cells. Red blood cell count would increase, oxygen would increase. But now there doesn't always have to be trauma where we need to increase oxygen levels. If we were all to get on a plane right now and fly to Mile High City, all right, you get there and you get off the plane and you're like, oh my God, we don't have mountains in Virginia, we've got molehills. Because look at that. Any of y'all ever been there? Okay, that was my reaction the first time. Okay, and so you're driving and you're making your way up to Vail and all these other places and you're going <laughs> and you're all shaking. Okay, the reason for that, the air is different. Okay, our ability for the use and getting oxygen is different. So what do they recommend you do? If you do that, drink let's water. say hmm? drink water. you got to drink water, but they also recommend that if you're planning to fly into Mile House City and then begin to drive up the mountain to the other areas like Vail and so forth, um, you're going to be told that you need to hang out in Colorado. You need to hang out here in Denver for about three days. Drink a lot of water. All right. Then begin your ascent of the mountains. They're telling you that because your body's picking up on these oxygen levels. It's going to produce more red blood cells, increase your ability for getting that oxygen so that when you do begin your ascent up the mountain, you're not suffering. Then when you come back and you get on the plane, you come back to Richmond where we're pretty much at sea level, okay? You feel so good. Oh my goodness. Woo! Yeah. Bring it over here. I can lift it. Because you got a bunch of red blood cells busy in that body. That's a natural way of blood donating. Y'all ever heard of it? Uh huh. Used to be. Athletes would get a shot. Guess what they're getting shot of? EPO. Okay? And now, rather than it being something illegal, they simply go train at a very high altitude before whatever event they're going to do. Whether that's a race, a bike race, whatever the case might be. They'll go train at a very high altitude Come back and be oh, ready to go. So, yeah, that's what happens. You increase those red blood cells, you increase the oxygen, which, of course, will make you feel better. So, their lifespan, roughly 120 days. The majority of the red blood cells die in the spleen. Now, when we get to the structure of the spleen, okay, um, you guys remember the three fibers of the body? Collagen, collagen 
Yes. Yeah.